right. So hello, hello, everyone. We have a special edition for our leadership call. I am Arlena Gafford, and uh, we co-host this together, Jennifer and I, every week. And so we welcome you to um, our leadership call this week. And so um, uh, that's me and Jennifer. You want to say hey? <laughs> Hey guys, hey, glad y'all could join. Jennifer, we'll see here from Texas, Todd, and we're just super excited about this call. So thank you guys for joining us. And so we um, wanna say a big thank you to Don who um, got our special guest today. So Don, you wanna introduce our guest? Okay, thank you. Yes, I am also very excited that that after our conversation, Nikki agreed to join our leaders call. But let me just give you a little bit about Nikki before she starts. Uh, she began her career as a teacher and athletic coach, but her most current position is included the CEO of the Direct Selling War World Alliance, the DSWA.org, and co-founder of the Coach Excellence School. She serves on board of directors for both public and privately held companies. She's also spoken at conventions around the world and consulted to hundreds of companies, including Avon in the past. So Nikki has, is carrying a lot of award recognition, the top 25 business women of Hawaii, top 30 female entrepreneurs in America, International Hero, Hero of Humanity, uh, the International 30 Most Influential Women in the Direct Selling Profession, uh, a National Advocate of the Year for Working Mothers, and more. So Nikki lives in Hawaii with her husband for over 45 years, enjoys her family time with her two adult children and grandchildren, I have to fess up, being grandma is the greatest, right, the Nikki? Best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> so it does bring me great pleasure to bring Nikki to our group. So welcome, Nikki. And is it pronounced Kehoho? Ho 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 There's only two <laughs> ho-hos, only at Christmas time. You can add a third, but right now it's just <laughs> ko ho ho Thank you so much, Don. And I want you all to know, Don, invited me she asked me had she not asked me i probably would have said hey don do you want me to do a little event for you all no she asked so it goes to tell you that that no just like in your business nobody's gonna just walk up and say i'm ready to sign up for avon today doesn't happen very often it's up to us to ask and that's one of the ways that we lead so today what we're talking about is being a leader of leaders how many of you would like to have more leaders in your team? This is the thing, yay. It means that we actually model leadership for them, which is a pretty big deal. So let's talk about what being a leader of leader is, what it looks like. There's a huge difference between being an accidental leader and a purposeful leader. And I want you to understand that People think, oh, she has so much charisma. She's so fun. She's so outgoing. She's this, she's that. Well, guess what? You can't duplicate charisma. You cannot duplicate that. So a, a purposeful leader has systems, has process, has step-by-step -step things that take place. When someone joins their team, a new representative, how do you work with them? How do you show up with them? So they can model the same thing when they become a leader. So the other thing about you know, being a purposeful leader is we're not doing everything for everybody. If we are creating codependent relationships, folks, I want you to know what happens is they lean on us for everything. And when you're that leader and everybody's leaning on you and then it kind of carries over to home, you're doing everything for everybody. You make sure you're the only one that can load the dishwasher, right? You're the only one that can do, you know, put the laundry in the sink. Everybody is leaning on you, and that's when you burn out. Great leaders love what they do, and they don't run around exhausted because everybody is leaning on them. 
I, and I hope that makes sense to you. And you really take a look. How do I show up with my family and with my, my unit? Because if we are empowering people to stand on their own, we're probably a purposeful leader, which is pretty exciting. So let's take a look at the kind, what kind of leader are you? I want you to just hold the mirror up for a minute and evaluate yourself. Where am I strong? What are areas that I'd like to work on? You know, what do people come to me for all the time that I could create a system around? This is us taking time to look at ourselves. You know, I did a, a big call for all uh, the company <laughs> and field. Whoops, someone's got a mute there. That was a virtual sneeze though, I wanted you to know, so none of us are gonna get anything. That's really exciting. <laughs> anyway, I did this call last night at 10 o'clock for India. And uh, they were just all different kinds of people on there from that country. And what was amazing to me as I was sitting there with you know, all these different folks was when I talked, uh, just I didn't do a whole lot on it, but I talked a little bit on you know, what is gonna grow our businesses during difficult times. And I don't know how many people are typing in the box, I'm exhausted. I'm trying to do everything at home. And, and by, by the way, very few women in the business in India. It's 70 something percent men. And they are having a hard time attracting the women and engaging the women because women think they have to do it all. So it was an interesting conversation to get another perspective. And what I really learned from that whole thing was there's some things we can let go of. I'm inviting you to take a look at what all you're doing that maybe somebody else could do. You don't have to have every piece of everything that happens in your home. And that, you know what that looks like to the outside? Man, I don't want to be doing that. That looks exhausting. Or when they call you up and you say, well, how are you doing? Oh man, I'm just overwhelmed. Do they go, oh, I can't wait to be overwhelmed too? That sounds like fun. I'm signing up to be one of those leaders. No, run, Forrest, run. They're gone. Our whole idea is to be an example for others to follow, an example for our children and our grandchildren. See, to me, if my grandchildren only saw me working, they wouldn't know what I'm even working for because there's no celebration. And also, there's no fun. So why, why would you want to work like that? And that's what's going on with a lot of the millennials today. They've seen their parents work hard to give more to their children. So guess what? They don't want to work that hard. They want to work fewer hours and have more fun and make more money. And so what are we modeling? What kind of leader are you? And I'm going to ask you right now, do not beat yourself up. Right now, some of you are going, oh, crawl, I'm doing everything for everybody. This isn't good. Uh-uh. Just note, you have today going forward. Can't do one thing about the past. We just learn from the past. From today going forward, we have a new opportunity to take care of us. You know, our families need us, folks. Our families need us as a nucleus with inside the family. You all know I traveled for 320 days out of the year for many, many, many years. And this thing with COVID and being able to be home, you know, for the first two months, my grandbabies would say, Mimi, are you gonna be here tomorrow? Mimi, are, are, do you have to leave again? I mean, they don't ask me anymore. I think they think I'm a permanent fixture now. I don't know, but I, I, what, I, what I noticed was they were used to me being gone and they love me being here. How present are you when you're with the people you're with? How present are you? What are the guidelines around your business? When you're gonna be on the phone, do they know? When you're doing a Zoom, I have a little sign that goes outside the door, Mimi's on a Zoom, so Zoom away and I'll Zoom out as soon as I'm done. <laughs> And they can read it. It's pretty funny. And now they go, are you Zooming? <laughs> yes, I'm Zooming. Okay. So they know to be quiet, that that's a time. So they'll come in the back door and run past you. Oh, they're so excited to be here. And But if they see that Zoom sign, they don't do it. So then I added one outside too. I just put one out there. 
let people know there are guidelines for you to be successful so you can be present when you are with them. I, I, I can't stress that one enough. A lot of people said, how do I reignite my team? And, you know, I want you all to kind of think about this too. Many of you came to the coach school that we did years ago in Chicago. And to me, coaching is the number one skill every great leader has got to learn. And I'm not going to talk a lot about it today, but many of you probably remember me saying, coaching is not cheerleading. And for some reason, leaders in our profession think we need to have pom-poms in our hands permanently, that we're supposed to be the cheerleader. We're supposed to pump everybody up, get everybody going. That's our job. People got to want to. They, they got to want to do it themselves, for themselves. I can be a role model for them to follow, but it's not my job to pump everybody up. But it is my job to train, to coach, to lead by example. Uh, that's my responsibility as a leader. I am not responsible for their success. Everybody just say this with me right now. I, say it, touch your chest like this. I am not responsible, am not responsible for anyone else's success. Release that. Because guess what? When you feel responsible, when one goes away, it takes a piece of you with them. And, and you feel like, I screwed up. You can't make somebody want to be successful in this business. You can model, you can coach, you can train. You cannot do it for them. And not everybody is willing to put in the time and to let go of some things. I'm just going to tell you what. Ellen DeGeneres does not know you're watching. I know that's a surprise for many of you. I'm just telling you, she doesn't know you're there. So all the time we put into watching TV is taking away from something else that could contribute to your family or to other people's lives. So if when I hear the word reigniting, and that was the word that was given to me, what I'm thinking is, is like they're dead. <laughs> they're not moving. They're not doing anything. So here's a hint, right now, during all this stuff, some people have gotten in a habit of doing nothing or of watching TV or making their children an excuse, not a reason. Well, I need to homeschool my kids. Well, my kids really need me right now. My kids need me to do their laundry. My kids, blah, blah, blah. I'm more clothes than I had before. All the stuff, please don't make your children the excuse. Make them the reason. What are you modeling for them? Really take a look at that. So to ignite people, first of all, just give them a call. And not, I didn't see an order this campaign. That's not, the, that's not what we're calling them about. We're calling them to see how they're doing. You know, th this is Nikki. I'm calling to check in. How are you and your family doing? I'm calling to see how you and your family are doing. Caring. Remember, you put a sticker on your phone. I call because I care. Care about people. Let them know you're, they're not a meal ticket for you. They're not a money machine for you. They are a person. So when you start off by calling, you may have not called them because you know what you did? You did all the excuse to, oh, I don't want to bother them. Oh, I know they're having financial troubles. Oh, I know that her husband is out of work. I, whatever it is that we made the excuses, let go of the excuse and just give people a call and let them know you care. And another easy question is how can I support you in your business right now? Or how can I support you and your family right now? Not help. When you use the word help, you attract the helpless. Let me say that again. When you use the word help, you attract the helpless. They want you to do it for them. They're back leaning on you again. We don't want to be leaned on until we fall over. So Igniting them is them igniting themselves, getting them back to that emotional why. What makes you, what made you decide to be in, in Avon? What are you looking for from your Avon business? How could Avon contribute to your life? And I believe this recording is going to be available. I know I'm going through these questions fast. Go back and listen to it. Capture these questions. Questions are engaging versus, well, I'm calling because you didn't put in an order. And I just want to know when you were going to do that order. No, be interested in them 
and they will find you interesting. Be interested in them. Call because you care. So when you ask those questions, you know, what, who, who has um, birthdays this summer? How much are you purchasing from your own store? You know, who do you know that could benefit right now? You said you have some friends that don't have a lot of um, extra income. And how could Avon support them with that? Or how do you see Avon supporting them with that? You know, when people are so busy just watching TV or so busy being at home and trying to take care of everyone, they can't see what's next. They can't see beyond their current circumstances. So supporting people to have a picture, a vision of what is beyond this situation. You know, people said to me, Nikki, how do you, how are you doing that? You're you know, home every day after all these years of traveling. And it was funny because I call it a staycation. You know, a lot of people call it isolation, lockdown. Think about what those words do to you. I'm locked down. That doesn't feel good. We got to be aware of our language that we're using. Because if we're using it, so are our children, so is our team. So pick that enlightened vocabulary. Go back to notes that we've taught you before. If you've been in any of our classes, pick up that enlightened vocabulary again and begin using it. Because your energy that you possess models for the rest of your team to also put some energy into their life and their business. I'm exhausted is like, when you say I am, whatever you say behind that follows you. So I'm exhausted. You're right. How do you, how do you feel, by the way, when you say I'm exhausted? Anybody have a comment in the chat box? What does that do to you when you say I'm exhausted? How are you feeling? Tired, drained, defeated. Wow. Makes me even more tired. Down. Wow. One other lady just said, how do you feel when you say exhausted? She said, really exhausted. I thought, oh, that's kind of scary. So what are you going to declare? I have more than enough energy to accomplish what I choose to today. I'm very careful about my words because I've got a lot of people that I want to make a difference for. How can I make a difference if I have zero energy? Think about that for yourself. And by the way, if there's anybody at the end that wants to be coached around this, because you're probably hearing it from your people, and I could certainly support you for a few minutes with learning some things about coaching people that are stuck right now, and they're stuck in that little pit, and they're on lockdown, not good. Staycation is way more fun, I'm just telling you. This is an important piece. When you stop growing, you stop going. Who wants a bunch of dead flowers around him? I don't. So guess what? Continue to grow. This, you know, maybe you're not earning as much right now, but you could be learning a lot right now so you can earn more when this thing is over. But right now, if you're learning, you're going to be earning more. So if you stop growing, you're just sort of there. Nobody in this company has arrived. I certainly haven't arrived. Every day I get to learn. And I'm taking a lot of classes right now. I'm so into right now in emotional intelligence. I just got certified in EQ. So I can teach all these classes about, you know, the thinking, even more than what I knew before, the science behind it and the brain and all that stuff. It's really fun. Both Grace and I are going through that right now. Because that's what gets in the way of most people. You know that? How they think. You got stinking thinking, don't expect good results. It ain't going to happen. So keep growing right now. You're here. You're on this call. How many people that could have been here had an excuse for not doing it? Hopefully they'll come and listen later. But the deal is invest in yourself. You know, that's one of the things, those income producing activities, investing in yourself is really income producing. Maybe not today, it will over time. So keep on growing. Now this I'm gonna take a minute on, and I don't know that you've ever seen this. I want you to think about it because there is a, you have an opportunity right now to create your reality. 
to have a different reality than whatever it was, if you choose to. Or to have the same or better. You know, I have a little thing that I say that is when something goes south, and I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but something doesn't turn out that you've invested a lot of time in. Maybe it's a new a prospect or somebody that you've been working with and you thought, oh, they're in, they're going to make this happen. And then they decide for some reason that they're not going to do it. Here's my mantra, and you can you can copy it if you want and use it for yourself. It is this or something more. So when that didn't work, there's something else. This same thing, someone as good as her or something more is going to come my way. This or something better. This or something beyond, beyond what is possible. Those three things is what we use to shift the thinking when that didn't work. This or something more. This or something better. This or something beyond, beyond what I ever thought was possible. And almost always it ends up being something beyond, beyond. Shifting your thinking. So creating your reality is, you can copy this down. I don't have a handout for you today, but um, just always, when you get something from somebody, to share where you got it. Don't just take it and make it yours. Share where you, where you received this. So hopefully you will do that. This is a DSWA um, model. People learn in models and metaphors, and this is one of the models we use. So it's how to create your reality. You first must be able to imagine. You've got to imagine what it would be like. Disneyland, Disney World would not be here had Walt Disney not imagined it far before he built it. So slow down in life and just imagine. When people say, I can't imagine making that much money. Well, until they imagine, they won't. I can't imagine owning a house like that. Well, until you can imagine, it shall never be. So first start with imagine. People think you start with goal setting. It's a long ways from here. You got to first imagine, then dream. So in imagine, you're kind of on the outside looking in, thinking it could be a possibility, but you're not really in that picture. With dreaming, you're starting to walk into the picture. You're starting to visualize it and see that this is possible. It could happen. And I'm just not quite sure what it looks like yet. Notice celebrate is third. And why we do celebration? If you do not celebrate, there's no joy in the journey, folks. And some of you, I know you, I've met you before. So guess what? This is your idea of celebration. Jack, got that one done. What is that saying to everybody else? There's no joy in the journey. So celebrate more often. You don't have to get your pom-poms out and do the, a big old cheerleading deal. Celebrate is just enjoying the progress you're making. I go outside and, you know, I, I'm blessed. I live in Hawaii. My pomegranates are very red out there right now and just getting ripe. I go out and look at our fruit. We have grapefruit that are coming in. We have tons of papayas that hopefully the birds will not eat. I don't want to know that if they are. Um, we have mountain apple. We have all these fruits in the yard. So I go outside and I just look at the fruits. We had babies up in our palm tree, baby birds up there. I noticed those. And then I look for butterflies because my mother always said, whenever you see a butterfly, I'm there. So I go outside and that's how I celebrate. And just a little moment of peace and enjoying the beauty around me. There's all different forms of celebration. Now notice, fourth is vision. Clear over here. It's vision, being able to see the picture and who is in that picture with you. Maybe your, part of your vision is to take your family on a holiday this year so you can see them laughing and playing and having fun and you're relaxed and you're enjoying yourself. Somebody just told me they took a vacation in a motorhome, like 10 people. That would not be real relaxing to me. So I probably wouldn't choose that one, but getting to a nice resort and everybody doing their own deal, that would be really fun and getting together at night, that would be fun. But you know, you gotta find what it is. So that wasn't a good picture for me. You know, my husband and I, and maybe two grandkids in a motorhome, that would be fun, but not then. Anyway, so get clear on your vision. Then be able to engage others in that vision. You've got to get, this is your family business, folks. We've got to get our family involved. We want to keep casting that vision out so that they are a part of it, so they can see it. Sometimes it takes a while to have something happen. Maybe it's a, a trip. Now, I know that 
everybody's canceled right now, but in a couple of years, we'll be back to doing trips. Maybe your husband wants to go on that trip. Well, he's got to see what will we do when we're there. They always have excursions. What would be a fun excursion for you? What will it be like just to be us and just to take time to be with nobody needing us? Paint pictures and let them walk into that picture. Use words that are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, feeling words to get that picture. We got to keep doing it with our team. It's the same thing because here's the deal. You may have a vision of doing X number of dollars in business this year. Let's say it's $500,000 in business. If you haven't got the input from your team in that vision, how do you know that that's even a possibility? You want to engage them so they're willing to say what they, how they're going to contribute to that vision. Just like your family, they can contribute to the vision. Little kids can contribute to the vision. The fact that they're quiet while you're on the phone, notice that, say, wow, today I noticed you were so quiet while mommy was on the phone. Boy, that is really a big support for having us get to, to get that that um, rank advancement so we can go on that holiday. You're a big part of making this happen. Communicate with them. Down here at the bottom, finally, we are at goals, folks. It's not the first thing. This, uh, otherwise, you set a goal, you don't know where you're going. It's a random little goal here, 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 here. We gotta walk people into the vision and walk ourselves into the vision. So. Goal setting comes after those things. And again, we celebrate. Now folks, if we do not have a plan and a timeline, don't expect it to happen. Well, I really want to be this. I wanna be an executive senior. I want that. Just because you want something doesn't mean you get it. Actually, wanting begets more wanting. It's not the same as getting. So if someone has a vision of being a senior executive unit leader, we're gonna get our team involved with that. We're gonna set the goals and the milestones for that, celebrate, and we're gonna have that timeline and the plan. What's it gonna take for that to happen? And here we have action and tracking. What is your action plan to make this happen and how are we gonna know if we're on target? What are those monthly numbers that, that, that we want to have in place so that we can reach that goal by the end of the year? Otherwise, you're killing yourself. The contest year is over and you're going, huh, I only have that same $500,000 to go. No, it's because you weren't tracking. All of this process, this reality, creating your reality is how you live your dreams. It isn't accidental. Again, the accidental leader, well, I hope that this happens. I'd like this to happen. I want this to happen. They have no steps in place to create a little different reality. I don't know if you know anybody like this, but I heard a lady in the store the other day, and I kind of stayed to myself in there with my little mask and things, but in fact, I hardly ever go. Everybody else goes for me. But I was listening to this lady talking to her mother. And her mother said to her, I don't know what makes you think it would be any different. We, for generations, we've been poor. My great grandparents were on welfare. My grandparents were poor. My mother, father were poor. I'm poor. You know, that's just what you're meant to be, is poor. And the girl would look at something and I heard the pattern of her mother. Her child say, mommy, can we have this? No, we can't afford it. No, we can't afford it. You're creating a reality for that child of lack. Lack. Not abundant thinking. So when your child asks for something, well, how would you like to earn the money to get that? How can you get that? What are you willing to do to get that? It's not, it's a dead end. There's no hope. When you say that to people, it sets up for no hope. It doesn't matter how long. You know, I think back, my, my father, when he married my mother, my mother was a very smart man. He was a woman and he was a very smart man. But when she married him, he had a duffel bag. 
with a few clothes, and that was it. And people said to her, what are you doing married? Because she, God, you won't believe this. This is top secret. She had dated Bob Barker. You know, from The Price is Right, I couldn't believe it. She told us this in later years in life, and she goes, he was a womanizer. I just wasn't interested. She also dated um, the Hershey, the son of the Hershey family. You know, the, the cho- she goes, oh, I had chocolate kisses for everybody. I, could, I She was a beautiful woman, but she was also very smart. And people would say to her, why would you marry someone that doesn't have anything? There are lots of people out there that, that you could marry. They have a lot of things. She goes, he has something other people don't have. Drive, ambition, integrity, love, work ethic. She goes, the money follows. You just have to have a plan. Now, it could have been different. She could have said, right, he doesn't have anything and I won't have anything either and that's okay. She didn't. This is like your life blueprint, folks. Whatever people said to you does not need to be your life. You'll amount to nothing. I had a woman at a coach school that got up and we were trying to get to her emotional why and and that's what came up. She said, I was told. I would amount to nothing. I had nothing. And she said, and for many years, I believed my mother. I believed her. And then I decided, who is she to decide my future? I get to decide my future. Remarkable young woman. So how much junk are you going to let in the trunk? Your reality is what you carry around with you from your past. When are you going to let go of it? If that's what's holding you back, you're honoring those people that said those horrible things to you. If we keep letting them be our voice, create a new reality. That's up to you. Comments or thoughts on this. If you, you, you can unmute yourself if you want, or, uh, Oh, here's something. Here's some really good comments here. Um, I'm thinking, my feet in the sand and a drink in my hand. That, that's a good pit vision for you. Our whole family works Avon together. Even my three-year-old helps with the Avon business. That we, We've done that. DSWA started with, y'all don't know this. We started and it moved to Hawaii from the mainland. Grace was already here because she came on a volleyball scholarship. My son was already here and he wasn't going to leave because he's a surfer. And all of a sudden we were in the mainland. And when we came here, Um, it was like, okay, we're going to move into a two bedroom condo, you know, with eight of us. So we started off with six and we had eight in the end starting this company and you build an international business with the same little tiny room. We're all tall. My, our feet were hitting this wall and our heads were hitting this wall when you lay down at night on the mat on the floor because there's no room for a bed. So there we are with little kids around us. It's hard to see for some people what is beyond that. We would talk about what was beyond that and to see what it would look like. And we've surpassed so many of the things that we said we were going to do in the next 25 years or whatever, and we've done all of them and more. I just, I just want to tell you, yes. I have a question. So yes. when you were talking about what type of leader that we are we an accidental leader or a um purposeful words wrote down purposeful leader yeah is there some type of um tool that you recommend for people to do that's not you know i've done the whole color personality test and all that some type of easy tool for like our newer leaders to take um like a quiz and kind of give them a definition of some different types of leadership styles anything that you recommend um, well, of course, we have our DISC assessment. We do have that that is online that is very specific to, to direct selling. Um, you can also get, um, it's not, we didn't write this book, but we're going to be doing more with Dr. Robert Rome, R-O-H-M. And Dr. Rome is a, uh, a specialist in behavioral styles, and we're going through the certification with his program. Um, there's, there's a lot of those, those kind of tools. The best thing to do is just to talk to people. You want to find that emotional why early on. What makes them tick? And every, it, you know, it's funny because I remember in Ava, just like every company, we have all different styles. Not everybody does things the same way. So that's why it's important that your 
events like this that you show different styles or if you're doing a panel that you have a D and I and S and a C. So I don't need to be you to be successful. I can be like anybody else here. It's giving people space and grace to shine. And remember in coaching, we have the whole thing around ICU acknowledgement. Acknowledge people so they begin to see their own greatness. That, that's, that's a factor. So all of us, you know, I've, I've said this for a hundred years and you probably remember me saying it. You've got to slow down in life so you can speed up. Slow down and get a plan. Slow down and decide how you choose to build this business. Are you going to listen to everybody else's stuff? Well, you know, they're changing everything. They're doing this. They're doing... Well, guess what? Life is filled with change. That's one thing we can guarantee. It is filled with change. It's how we respond or react react is from emotion, how we respond from logic and have a plan to do whatever that needs to be done to get through that. So communication, right now more than ever, we must communicate with our team stronger than we ever have. Communication, yes. they, they cannot feel they're in this alone. They've got to know you're with them. So lots of tools, uh, on the, well, one, for one thing, the DSWA app, now we have a month free of membership for $8.95 a month and you get an app. And every week you get Aloha Friday from us. And on Aloha Friday, it's a new training video to make you think in, on a variety of subjects. We've added the, one of the largest, most successful wealth building teams out of New York, Bernstein, who is going to be doing a lot of things around the money thought process, as well as... Um, how to how to create wealth and we have a, a new audio or a video that's going to be coming up i'm i'm vi videoing it on thursday so get in there and i'll tell you at the end how you can become a member but it's really deciding that you're going to take care of your education and support them we got to find ways that are inexpensive for people to invest in themselves so eight dollars and 95 cents a month is an investment and with that, they, get, they also have access to our group insurance. We have yeah. a couple of questions. Um, I'm going to real quick catch this about the app. The question is, is it dswa.org to get the app, or is there a name of the app that we can download from the Play Store? Well, right now, I'm, I, let me see if it's coming up here. Just a second. Okay. Um, I'll take you there for now, just so you have it, and then I'll come back. Right there dswa.org forward slash membership. And okay. with that, you get the, uh, the weekly you know, video that we do. There's a huge training library with all new things in it, lots of new videos. We do shareable images, and Avon does really well with Scott with your images. There just might be some that you like that are in there. Big mm -hmm. discount, 45 to 60% discount with Vistaprint. Uh, twelve ninety nine for um, our Zoom and Voxer. Twelve ninety nine a month. You can put five hundred people on there. I mean, there's a lot of things. And now we're going to add Audible books, also that you get cool. for eight dollars and ninety five cents a month. It's pretty cheap. So just write down that thing right there. And what other question did you have? Or should okay, we wait till we, we get to questions? Yeah. And we have another question from Jessica. Where does the emotional why come into play on this when you create your reality circle? You really want to know your emotional why first, because that's what drives you. Your emotional why is different than a material why, and that's a different training. But the emotional why is how you are feeling. It's a feeling. It's internal. Material why is what you can see and touch. It's external. So we teach that you actually get to that emotional why when you sit down with any new member and any new uh, representative that's joining the company. Because if you understand that, if they get off base and you're, they say they want to go north and they're going south, you have something to hang on to, which is really, really an important factor. So I can't tell you, especially right now more than ever, getting to the emotional why of your folks you did that. If you took the Chicago Coach School, go back to that. There's a little bit on emotional why in the back of that book. Go back and, and study that again. And because you've been to a coach school, you can come back to a virtual school for half price. And if you need information about that, you can just write to coach. So what is your vision of your future? How clear are you? How clear are you? 
Is it that if it's muddy, when people say, I'm, I'm feeling kind of lost, I can tell you they've lost their vision and they've lost their emotional why. They're gone. If, if it's clear as mud, you're marking time, folks. And you can only do that for so long. And especially with today's people, because they lose interest. If they're not making progress and they're staying flat or going backwards, they lose interest and they don't continue on the path of moving forward. So, uh, and let me go on. How do I visualize myself building my business? Write that down and I'm going to ask you to ponder that question. After we hang up today or tonight, how do I visualize myself building my business over the next year? You may build it differently. You may be doing things more online. And by the way, with that Zoom you get from us, there's a whole tutorial with how to use breakout rooms and all kinds of things that you get to do. And what is beautiful about that is you can see people. What we want to do is use the, as many modalities as we can. The visual, the audio, the kinesthetic. Having you, just like the thing that we did, that is a kinesthetic move. We've got to involve that. So how do you train people in this using tools of technology versus being in person? That's a different training. But I'm just saying to you, you got to get good at this because how we're going to build our business is going to be more virtual and it is going to be more through other means of connectivity. We're going to come out with some things for LinkedIn this year that will really support people. That's where people go that are looking for a, a business. It's also where people go that are business people and already know business. So um, there's a lot you can do with that tool too. So how do I visualize? Write that question down, come back to it. So insights and questions. So this is your chance. You can ask anything you want. Um, if you want to take, go through the chat, Jennifer, I don't know if that's you. If there's things that you want to bring up or questions that have come up. So there was one, where does the emotional why? Yeah. So anybody, anybody with thoughts right now? Um, they're excited about the app. Everybody's ready to join that. Arlena, do you have any questions on the Facebook um, part? While she's looking, I just really yeah. want to get, I want to compliment everybody for taking time to do this. You know, if your company doesn't have any leadership specific training that's going on right now, you're just taking it and, and doing it. And that's, yeah. I'm really proud of you for that. You know, I think, I think we got, um, I, Arlena and I, this started when we were talking one day and just felt whenever everything kind of began to close down and just felt so disconnected and we needed that support of the other leaders and, you know, having that connection. Mm -hmm. And so this, she was like, let's do a Zoom meeting. I was like, okay, let's do it. And it's really been a blessing for all of us to learn from each other. And I think um, what could have been a huge struggle we, at, together, us working together through these last couple of months has made this just a great success story that we've been able to lean on each other and really grow in this time. We've learned so much from each other. Yes. It looks like Arlene had a question. Yes, okay. Arlene. <laughs> Good. Um, my question is, you said coaching should not be cheerleading, and I'm realizing that I am more in a cheerleading mood than coaching mode, I think a lot of times. So can you explain maybe like a couple tasks on what coaching would be compared to what cheerleading would be? Did you get to go to that Chicago event? I didn't. Were you in the AUL Academy? I was. Okay, go back. There is a module in there on coaching. Go back and read that again and take it because it will support you. And by the way, we have a sale right now on that whole elite course that you can do online. And that might be really helpful for you too. Here's the basic difference. Coaching is me asking and drawing from you. Training is me telling and giving you the answer. In cheerleading, we take on the responsibility to lift those people up, which is a temporary situation. Now, if they do it themselves, if I, if I, like I ask the question, what are you most proud of in your business this week? That's coming from them. They're learning how to take care of their own thinking. You know, what was your biggest win this week? So they can start to celebrate the small things. So 
Coaching is a way to empower people. It's the art of asking a specific type of question that allows that person to think for themselves and to be able to create a different reality for themselves, to move things around in their head to get a different result. And if we all learn to do this for ourselves, you in that class, you probably learned about self-coaching also. And that's a great CD on our website. Self-coaching is us asking ourselves better questions. So what am I doing well right now in the business? Whose life could I make a difference in today if I called someone? You know, what is the most exciting thing happening in Avon right now? How can I sell more products under these circumstances? You find the answer. So that is the basic difference. Is it as a question, the person searches for their own answer, and then all of a sudden, they then another step in there is agreed action and accountability, and they learn to agree to the action that they're willing to take and be accountable for themselves. They're not accountable to you. You don't want everybody leaning on you and you they're accountable to you. Did that answer the question, Arlene? Arlena? It did. Okay. Um, and we have a question from Facebook. Yes. Pamela asks, are there any suggestions for online recruiting? Any suggestions for one-on-one -on -one recruiting? Online recruiting. Online. Uh, uh, online recruiting. Okay. First of all, build the relationship with the person. If you can, if you're going out to, to connect with people, build the relationship. Don't set it, don't start the relationship on a Facebook page that says, do you, do you want to sell Avon? First of all, that's a closed ended question. All they're going to say is yes or no. And they say, no, you haven't got any place to go. So build the relationship first. See if you can get to them on Zoom or another tool so you can see their face, so you can see their engagement, so you can, so you can tell, are they congruent in what they're saying? So on your Facebook, ask questions. You know, what do you like about what you're doing now? Or, you know, how, how is, um, are, are you currently working with, currently working in a job or, or are you looking for something else? I, you know, ask questions to get to know the person. That's really the key. And then use the tools. There's a ton of articles and insights and things on recruiting on the app also. So I just know that people that try to jump in and recruit somebody without having a relationship, it, it doesn't work. So slow it down, be present with that person. It's all about them. It's like take out your little light and shine it on them. Everything is about them. It's not about you. They don't want to know what you've done, what, how much money you've made. They don't, they don't want to know all that stuff. By the way, would you like a tip around that money thing? That for some reason, the, oh, and, oh, good, Beth remembered who, what, when, where, how questions. I'm proud of you, Miss Beth. Here's the thing. This, I don't know what it is, but they feel they can ask us about how much money we make. You know, we don't do that to our doctor or lawyer or anybody else, but for some reason, people think they can ask a direct seller, well, how much money do you make? So whatever you say may not be what hits their button. It could be too low. It could be too high. They think, oh, I can make way more than that doing what I'm doing, or, oh, God, that's all she makes. So don't tell them. Here's, here's some words that you can use. You might want to write them down. I make a significant amount of money. And there are people in our company that make significantly more than me. What would be significant to you? I make a significant amount of money. That's because it is significant to you. It could be 50 bucks. It could be 50,000. It's significant to you. That's a personal thing. I make a significant amount of money. And there are people in our company that make significantly more than me. What would be significant to you? Mm -hmm. That's a powerful little statement. And it takes you out from under the microscope. Any, any other questions? I have one more question. I'm always full of questions. <laughs> I have one more question. You mentioned at the first um, a little bit about self-awareness. <clears throat> and I'm doing a... a like a training course um, that I've been doing some independent training on. And it was talking a lot about being self-aware as the type of leader that you are. And when I reevaluated my team, <clears throat> I found that I was more um, just 
this is what we need to do. This is your goal. Do it. This is how it works. And just very, you know, telling rigid. And so I've had to more work more on my team culture and just making sure everybody felt included and loved wherever they were. Um, is it, do you have any suggestions for leaders that want, I'm just very number management style. That's my thought process. And I need to be more role model example style. So any recommendations on how to do that switch or resources around that? First of all, catch yourself with what you just said. So I'm going to have you mute because we're getting a little bit of bath. What you just said, I am this rigid. I am this, that, 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 that. In my past, this is a reframe of what you just said for you to catch. In my past, I was kind of rigid and was directing traffic. From today going forward, this is called pre-pacing. You're laying out a new pre-paving. You're laying out a new method. From today going forward, I choose to engage people. I choose to have people participate. I choose to get insights from others. What, what do you choose to do? Because see, nobody came to direct selling to have a boss, folks. They didn't come here so they could work for you. They wanted to be independent. And when we're telling them what you need to do, what you should do, what you have to do, it's really saying you're so dumb, you can't figure it out for yourself. So I got to tell you what to do every step of the way. And I know that that's no one's intent. It can be perceived that way. So what would you like to do with the business? How far would you like to go with the business? Where would you like to begin? What is it that you know that will support you in being successful in this business? What would you like to learn about so you can be even more successful? Draw from them. Remember, these are some of you, this is a long time ago, so you maybe don't still have this in your, your brain, but I'm going to tell you, when you just train, you tell and you teach and you demonstrate, average retention and application of what you said is 22%. Hardly anything. When you combine your coaching skills with your training skills, average retention and application is 88%. Significantly different. Would you rather have the results of 22 or 88? I kind of prefer the 88. So how many questions have I asked you in this training? Hundreds, hundreds of questions I've put out there because I want you to get it. I'm investing my time in you. I want you to get the best results. So in order for you to get the best results, I got to get in your head and in your heart. And I'm only in your head when I'm telling you what you need to do and you're deflecting. Does that support you, Jennifer, with that? Okay, good. More questions, more comments. Woohoo! I'm a teacher and these are wonderful strategies for my classroom management too. Absolutely. We have a whole coach school, coach excellent school for educators. We're working in some of the largest school districts in the country right now because what we found out was teachers aren't taught how to bring coaching into the classroom. And it's a massive difference in what children get out of that classroom. That's really important. I need to get in your head and your heart. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sharon. I'm certain you have a brilliant mind, more so than mine, and that your heart is there. You just haven't, haven't brought it in as much lately. And but sometimes that's because of our, you know, how we were taught. If, I've heard people in this profession say, if you just do what I tell you to do, you'll be successful. You'll be successful just like me. Just do it like I do it. They may not want to do it like you do it. It may be a whole different behavioral style and it doesn't work for them. So what would make you say, why don't you be a me like, just like me? They're afraid to make a mistake because they can't be you. They're themselves. Um, I found when I share what has worked for me and ask them to add what they would do to tweak it, it makes it more personable to them and I get more action. That's probably a very, that's a, that's a better step than just telling them, here's what I would do. Here's the thing, and, and here's another, just get rid of this out of your vocabulary. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. And what I found is this, people know they've been felt out founded folks. They know that's a tactic. Don't need that. And that is the beauty of the business that everyone can personalize based on their life and personality. Very true. 
Give them space and grace to be themselves and feel good about who they are. People come to this business, and Avon has always been one of the businesses that people come because they feel part of the community. They belong. They can contribute. Maybe they don't contribute with big sales, but they bake cookies for the meeting, and that's how they want to contribute. I say pop those Oreos in the oven and take them on down. Um, and we're almost out of time. I'm so glad I have another Zoom immediately after this one that I got to get loaded up. But I got to tell you, it's just fun being back with you. I, I love what Avon stands for. I love the people in your company. And I'm so grateful that I was invited to do this. And Don, you, you made a difference for other people. Just sometimes just opening your mind to a new thought and to bring something back that you'd forgotten about. This is, this is your time. And hopefully the company will, will find out we're here at some point and we'll get invited <laughs> back. That's, that's what I'm hoping because both Grace and I love this. And I've got one last thing. This is, this is uh, the mommy's bragging moment. You don't know this because we didn't really talk about it too much. Grace was selected as the outstanding mother of the year for the state of Hawaii. And the American Lung Association chose somebody from this state for the first time in the history. And it's based on being a good mother, having a successful business or running a successful business. And the third thing is community service. And she does all three of those. My parting comment here is you don't have to choose. You don't have to just, just, just say, this is what I get to be. I'm going to be a businesswoman. No, you can be a good mother and you can give back to your community because there's joy in the journey so you can accomplish more each day. Celebrate yourselves. Love yourself. Be grateful for this opportunity that you have been given and make the most with what you have. So I'm sorry I need to leave, but I just want to tell you all thank you and it's good to be back home. Vicki, do you do you mind sharing that last slide with us one last time before you go that had the information about DSWA? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's so DSWA.org yeah. forward slash membership if somebody wants to send that. And then here are ways you can get involved. And Renee Hobley is running our membership. And so she's yeah. doing some great things on our member Facebook. So DSWA members, I don't have it up there, but it, you, you want to get that. She's I love working with her at Avon and, and she's just a joy here. So let her know that you heard she, she's here and she'll love to hear from you. So thank you everyone. And by the way, she's volunteering. She just loves what she gets to do here as a volunteer. And we need more volunteers. If you know people that are looking for, for things that they want to do and to learn, we're looking for volunteers. You can just write to, to um, member and membership at dswa.org and that's where you get Renee. So one more time, I'm going over here and then I'm gonna jump off. Thank you again, aloha everyone. We Thank, will you. See you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki, we appreciate you so much. Yes. Thank you. That was awesome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.